to learn. I'm the host from AI Camp. Before we get started, just want to do a quick introduction on AI Camp. We are a global online platform for developers, engineers, and data scientists to learn and practice AI technology with the mission of make AI available to our developers. AI Camp have grown to over 50,000 tech engineers in the group, have hosted over 300 local tech meetups, workshops, boot camps, large tech conference, and live stream most of the tech talks globally. We have local study groups in major cities in the US, a few cities in Euro Europe, India, China, Australia. You can take a look at our website to see our upcoming tech talks, workshops, and crash courses that we offer. So we are very excited to have Bradley tech lead in Google. In today's talk, Bradley will talk about the open source project that his team have been working on, Kubeflow. Pipelines, which are the reusable end-to-end -end machine learning flow works built using the Kubeflow Pipelines SDK. Before we get started, just want to tell you a little background about Bradley. He's a software engineer at Google. He has been working on various cloud machine learning projects and recently lead a machine learning pipeline project. So without further ado, let's welcome Bradley. Hey, thanks, Mika. So, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I don't know. So, um, so my name is Bradley, and my, I'm a tech lead in Google. Today, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, a open source project that my team has been working on for a year. Uh, so, this project is called Kubeflow Pipelines. I will explain. If, if you're not familiar with Kubeflow, I will explain a little bit more later. So, uh, let me first. Uh, take you to the project homepage. Um, it's, if you just search for Kubeflow pipelines, okay. So this is the homepage um, of our project. Um, so uh, <clears throat> my team has been uh, working on it for a year. Uh, although it started uh, um, as a, w we know we will open source it, but we just make it made it public last month. So it's uh, uh, it's still less than a month uh, uh, after um, it went to public. Okay, now get back to the slides. So uh, here's a, a little bit of background on this project. So. Uh, so we are on top of Kubeflow, and Kubeflow is on top of Kubernetes. So Kubeflow, you can think of it as a um, another open source um, offering that basically uh, builds a lot of tools and uh, infrastructure on top of Kubernetes for machine learning purpose. For example, uh, if you have a Kubeflow deployment, it comes with like distributed uh, TensorFlow training, Jupyter Hub. Uh, hyperparameter tuning tools like CATIP, TF Serving, Ambassador, uh, those kind of useful uh, tools and libraries uh, to use on top of Kubernetes. And Kubeflow has uh, becoming very popular uh, recently. So we are uh, another project on top of Kubeflow. We call it uh, Kubeflow Pipelines. And uh, uh, our project basically provides the orchestration uh, infrastructure and a front end, uh, including both uh, uh, UI and API, and also our authoring experience, extensible experience for machine learning pipelines. So uh, there are, uh, it's very obvious there are three layers. Um, uh, at, the, at, the, at the very bottom, it's Kubernetes. So we choose Kubernetes because we want it to be portable, very portable, like between uh, clouds and on-prem uh, deployment, or even local machine using a, a mini cube. And uh, then Kubeflow is something we rely on. We use a lot of uh, Kubeflow tools like Ambassador, TF Job, and then on top of it, then on top of it, we we create our own uh, CRDs. We create our own services on top of Kubernetes. Uh, which provides the uh, the uh, consuming experience. Basically, it's for business analysis to to do machine learning, to to do uh, to run machine learning pipelines, to do hyperparameter tunings uh, with a point and click experience, no coding required. And on the other hand, uh, what's uh, I think what's more important is we also provide an authoring experience, basically for data scientists to use the the tools that are familiar with 
to create pipelines, to create pipeline components. And also, we also define uh, some interfaces between components and pipelines. So to make these uh, pipeline, uh, pipelines and pipeline steps or components reusable, uh, we want to provide this uh, legalization of uh, uh, machine learning tasks. And um, in the meantime, we are also uh, uh, working on uh, uh, some uh, repository for uh, AI assets. So that is well connected to the Kubeflow Pipelines project. Oops. Sorry, my screen is stuck. Let me, okay, it works. Now let's first take a look at a very, uh, I think this example everyone is pretty familiar with. Um, this uh, is a, it is a typical uh, classification example with IRS data set, right? So usually a machine learning task uh, includes a few stages. First is you basically do pre-processing. In this case, it's, it does very minimal pre-processing, uh, only splits the data into uh, training and test sets. And then, then you start with training. Uh, you pick an algorithm, you, you do some hyperparameter search, and you pass it uh, uh, the training data and test data, and then you gather some metrics. And, and last, you do some uh, prediction to very use your data set to make sure uh, the, 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 the metrics, the performance is okay. And uh, if everything works, usually the last step is to push it to the production for online serving. So in this case, uh, it, it's, it's very simple, but we know that real world machine learning is totally different. There are lots of aspects uh, that is uh, in that that basically uh, describes the gaps between an iris simple iris sample and a real world machine learning scenario. Uh, for example, uh, the data in iris everything is new uh, or numeric, but in real world you have numerical, you have categorical text, image, speech, video. You have uh, uh, structured data and unstructured data. You need to do pre-processing on these and. Uh, uh, of course, a lot of times you want to do sampling, you want to do cleanup, for example, clean up your text, remove punctuation, uh, lower casing, and uh, you may also want to do some advanced uh, uh, um, uh, feature engineering like uh, the PCA dimension re reduction or produce embeddings from um, unstructured data. And data size also matters. So for a simple case like Iris, there are only above uh, 100 instances. But in real world, we are seeing like, for example, the uh, image classification. If you train image classification with, with ResNet, I think there are a few hundred million uh, images that you need to deal with. Um, also, the data size, uh, uh, it can uh, go easily to more than 100 gigabytes. So you need our, uh, our, our, our system that can deal with large data. Um, also, algorithm um, on the algorithm side, uh, the the error sample we just see the, uh, it uses uh, um, a nearest neighbor. It's a very uh, simple algorithm, but in reality, uh, there are, uh, with with the uh, uh, when we start uh, 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 dealing with unstructured data, usually we use a lot of deep neural network to 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 process like images, speeches, and and videos also including text. So it's usually our, uh, com uh, our uh, multi-layer um, deep neural network, including convolutional layers, RSTM layers. There are also like different architects of, of the, uh, uh, the training um, uh, algorithm, like uh, the uh, state-of-art uh, graph uh, uh, trainer and object detection, and sometimes you want to ensemble the models so it, it, it's, it's, it's usually much more complicated than a simple algorithm like linear regression or, uh, or, uh, uh, or like a nearest neighbors. And also in production, if you want to deploy your model, uh, deploy your pipeline, training pipeline to the production, then you, you, you typically, it's not a one-off training. It's not like experiment. You start off a training, then you, 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 you wait for it, wait for the results. It's not like that. It's usually a continuous pipeline that uh, sits there waiting for the data comes in. Then it, it trains some batch of data uh, and produces a new model. And sometimes we do incremental training. And if the model performance is OK, automatically push it to the production. It's, it, it's a pipeline. It's a, uh, it's, everything is automated. It's not like your one-off uh, experimental environment. 
And also in production environment, you want the reproducibility, you want scalability, you want uh, availability, and you also want the pipeline to be recoverable. Uh, like a lot of times if you deal with uh, big data, you tend to have a, a large cluster and the uh, job is long running and uh, you, you, you do want to start from, uh, from scratch in case some uh, random failures. And also uh, in terms of prediction, some sectors require not just a prediction, but it also requires the explanation of the prediction. Why do you predict, right? So it, it usually comes with uh, legal requirements. Um, and also uh, when you train a model, uh, 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 it's, it's usually not an offline model because you want to deploy the model to, to for online serving, you want a high availability, low latency, you want you wanted the model to to give you response uh, as uh, as as quick as possible. Oops. Sorry, and uh, 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 many times you also want to track the model, like what kind of data is used to train this model, and you also want uh, debugging, tracing, and usage of, of, of this model. So these are all uh, production that are all things that comes with a production system. And also, I think what's more important, even more important is, is usually it's not a single node job, like everything is in memory, you can complete in one uh, like Python script. It's usually not the case in a large scale uh, real production uh, machine learning pipelines. A uh, lot of ca cases, it, the, the job uh, goes across uh, um, on-prem and cloud environment, because for example, if you're a a large uh, or, um, uh, corporation, you you don't want your data to uh, raw data to be in the cloud. Then you do some pre-processing in the cloud using like your local deployment like Spark, and uh, and then once the data is pre-processed, there is no no sensitive information. Then you want to utilize the cloud infrastructure, for example, GPUs or TPUs or uh, uh, um, to, to, to train the model. And um, a lot of times, uh, even if it's not uh, a cross between on-prem or cloud, it, it sometimes it's cross clusters uh, because different stages in machine learning usually uh, um, involves different types of system. For example, pre-processing, you usually do, sometimes you do it with a data, uh, um, a parallel, uh, data parallel processing framework, such as Spark or Dataflow. So th this is like usually one cluster, but the training could be a different cluster because you want the GPUs, you want the TPUs, and serving is also a different environment because you want high availability, low latency. So the requirements on the infrastructure, on the hardware is, is different in different stages of machine learning pipelines. And you also want some helpers like uh, hyperparameter tunings. You want a framework to do hyperparameter tuning to do like sweeping the a combination of uh, the, the hyperparameters to find the best ones. You also need some help on this. So my point is the so real world machine learning is different from just running a Python script to train uh, a IRS model. And let's look at the reality. So the reality is, um, so th there are two, we all know there are two different roles in, in, the, in the machine learning world. Uh, in one world, it's the data scientist world, the tools, are includes Jupyter Notebooks, SQL, NumPy, Matplotlib, Visualization, SKLearn, and the program, programming language is usually R or Python. Um, so this is one word. And on the other side, you have a even larger community of software uh, or engineers or data engineers, and, and, and they speak different language. They, they are more familiar with Spark, Docker, Kubernetes, different types of cloud, and their languages, like programming languages, are usually like C++, Java, Scala, Go. And uh, they, they deal with performance, authentication, API, network, debugging, threading, all these kinds of things. So a lot of times these are disconnected words. Like in data scientist words, everything is, is uh, it's a statistic word and everything is a probability. And in software engineers words, um, uh, 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 everything needs to be ideally to be reproducible, uh, uh, it's a mechanical word. So how, how do we connect uh, uh, these two words? How, how do we uh, offer 
the data scientists the best tooling to create a production system, production pipelines. This is the mission of this project. So uh, basically, we need a system. So we, we want the system to, to make it easier for data scientists to convert their experimental results into a production pipelines. So it can be, it can start from a Jupyter notebook, but it can easily be deployed to a production system that is highly available and scalable and reproducible. And we want data scientists who has more knowledge, who has a state of art uh, machine learning uh, uh, skills to, to enable them to, to create uh, production pipelines. And also what's even more important is we want to create uh, uh, some infrastructure to make uh, the, these components, re a lot of components reusable so that uh, uh, in the future, you, you don't need to start from scratch to create your machine learning pipeline. There are already, there is a marketplace or there is a hub that hosts lots of reusable components you can, uh, and pipelines. You can, you can pick those components, you can pick an existing pipeline instead of, uh, and then customize it and modify it a little bit, then it becomes your own pipeline. So what we find is, is lot, it, in a lot of cases, um, um, uh, you, you, can, you, can, you can find some solutions in, in the market, but usually uh, the solution works, like 90% of solution works perfectly for you, but only because you want to customize the 10% of the solution, then you have to start from scr scratch. We want to change the, uh, this kind of uh, reality. We want to make, everything uh, uh, composable, reusable, and searchable and discoverable. And also we need a system to orchestrate, uh, being the orchestrator of multiple systems. So there are some efforts, like uh, there are some efforts in Spark, in Dataflow, uh, in Airflow, a lot of machine learning users use Airflow to, to as their uh, machine learning uh, orchestration uh, 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 platform. So, so, but I think we need an orchestrator that can span across multiple env environments, including cloud and on-prem transition, and uh, also including like, uh, uh, like connect the Spark, Dataflow, TensorFlow, all these kind of technologies. Um, it's, it's like an Uber uh, orchestration system. So today I'm going to do a quick walkthrough um, on uh, uh, the uh, experience that we provide. Uh, I will talk a little bit on the consumer experience, basically walk you through the, 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 the point and click experience on the pipeline system, experience our UI. Um, and then uh, I'll spend more time on how do we author a pipeline? How do we author a pipeline components? And at last I will spend two minutes on how to set it up. It's, 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 uh, it's very easy. So let me switch to Okay, I, I already set it up. I'll go through the, like I said, I will go through the, the setup experience uh, at the end of my demo. But assuming everything is set up, so I have a, um, I have a, 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 a SSH connection to the cluster. So this is our UI. So once you deploy it, it's a, it's a Kubeflow, uh, it's a, a Kubernetes cluster, comes with a front end. So this is a front end. Um, it comes with some uh, pre-installed pipelines that you can run. Uh, for, for example, uh, I'll pick a, a basic example, I call it parallel join. So what it does is uh, there are two parallel tasks, each one downloading a text file from, uh, from, from uh, Google Cloud Storage. And then at the last step, basically merge these steps and print it out. It's a very uh, simple pipeline. It demonstrates the capability, the parallelism cap capability of the pipeline system. And there are also other, uh, like there are two uh, real world machine learning uh, pipelines. Like for example, this one, it's a distributed uh, XGBoost uh, training pipeline in, in Google uh, data proc uh, our cluster. So um, this is our, a, the, um, the, st uh, the, we call it uh, static uh, uh, topology. Static topology is different from the runtime topology because, because not everything, the topology is not fully decided uh, until the runtime because we also support the runtime conditions, runtime loops. So in this particular case, 
it's, it's a more uh, uh, sophisticated uh, topology. Um, it starts with a create a data pro cluster and then does some analyze and transform. So analyze is basically compute the stats and vocabulary of your data. Transform converts your data, CSV data into like uh, a libSVM format that XGBoost can, can consume. And then it starts training and, and then followed by prediction. And here, what's hidden here is there are two boxes. One is confusion matrix and one is ROC. Um, Okay, and then we can um, start and so we also introduced this in an experiment uh, uh, concept. Basically think of it as a walk, uh, as a workspace or a project. So here I already created uh, my, my own uh, experiments. So under that, so there's, there's no new run, uh, there's no runs here. Um, we can, um, okay, I don't know why, but let me reconnect to, I, okay, so it shows my uh, existing experiments and then I can, I can go to the experiments and start a new run and I can pick a package. For example, I want to uh, pick a, uh, this parallel join uh, package and then give it a run name, say run one. And, and, and uh, these pipelines, so uh, the author can choose to provide a default value of the parameters. So in this case, this is a URL of two uh, text files and I can say uh, create then it creates our one-off run. You can also uh, start a recurrent run to, to like run it periodically. Okay, so this, this is my run. And so this is the runtime graph. As I, as I mentioned, this could be different from the, the, the static graph because uh, uh, there could be runtime conditions and runtime loops. So as, as the job progress, it will, uh, it will uh, more and more uh, steps will show up here. And I think I have another run. Oops, I don't know why my experiments don't show up here. Okay. I think there could be some uh, unstable connection uh, between my uh, my network in my network uh, between my home and uh, and the Google Cloud. So okay, there's some problem with the uh, SSH connection. Let me try it again. Okay, these are all my uh, pipeline runs. Okay, so the, the, uh, the pipeline I just, uh, I just finished should be able, oh, we should be able to find it somewhere here, although my connection is not very stable. Um, let me try it again.
Okay, hopefully this time it works. Let's see. The front end will make an uh, API call to the back end to get all the list of the runs. So this is the run one I just created. If you click on uh, these boxes, it will show you the artifacts uh, each step produces. In this case, there's nothing, but you can see the input and output uh, of the steps. In this case, the input is a URL of, of a text file and the output is a content of, of, of the file. And here, the last step echo basically uh, uh, concatenates the two, uh, the two pieces of text together and, and print it out. And you can also click the logs to, to, to see the, the to, for your debugging. And uh, I want to show you a more sophisticated uh, uh, a real world machine learning uh, pipeline runs. Uh, not sure uh, if the network is good enough for me to let's give it a last try if it doesn't work i go back to the slides and other demos Okay, so this is a run that I did uh, uh, last hour. So it, th this is the uh, the scenario is to uh, to predict a case resolution based on the San Francisco uh, police uh, uh, data. Uh, basically, there are some features like when this case uh, happened and where it happened, how many people are involved, and this is to predict like uh, what's the resolution is is it does it comes with some some results like someone is arrested someone is sued or it just comes with uh, no results it's basically a binary classification and for each of the boxes uh, 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 you can you can click on artifacts inputs and outputs and you can see the logs in this case uh, the logs are more meaningful here the first step is create a data proc cluster uh, uh, in the Google Cloud a uh, more interesting thing is like if you like click a predict, if you click artifacts, it will show a table view of sample sampling of the, the, the prediction results. If you click confusion matrix, this is a binary classification. Um, uh, uh, so you, you get this two by two uh, um, boxes. And you also comes like, for example, ROC curve. So these front end, so, so we, we build a rich collection of the uh, front end uh, libraries. So for the component author, so long as you declare what type of data you are and follow some conventions and tell us, okay, this is a confusion matrix data and, uh, and, and this column is truth, this column is predicted, this column is counts, then we'll uh, plot a confusion matrix for you. Okay, so this is the uh, consumer experience. So the consumer experience is basically for like um, data scientists or uh, business analysts to 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 um, to do hyperparameter tuning to 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 point the pipeline to to different uh, uh, data sets and 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 to do uh, these kind of things. And now the question is, how easy it is to create such pipeline? So you notice there's a notebooks link um, on the left side. So I will start from uh, the, the, a, a basic uh, pipeline. So uh, what you, uh, you need to do is, so first install the SDK um, in, into the, uh, the Jupyter uh, kernel. And then what you are seeing now is, is a language, we call it a DSL, Domain Specific Language. It describes uh, the, the uh, uh, um, the topology of the pipeline. So um, each each operator here we defined is backed up by a container, a Docker container image. Like in this case, uh, this uh, flip coin op, it is backed up by a Python uh, Alpine image, 
And the com command to run is basically run a Python script, generates a random result, whether it's head or tail. And then what it says is to uh, store the results. The results could be either head or tail, uh, save the results into a local file system inside the Docker containers. Okay, so this is what it does. And the next step is, is basically to, to uh, print it out. It uses another uh, container image, and the command to run is basically uh, just run uh, echo uh, some, some string. So with these definitions, uh, so now you can see each operator is, uh, uh, consists of two things. One is a Docker container, and the other is a Python class that describes how to, to, uh, does the outside world interact with this Docker container. And in, in the pipeline uh, function, so, so for any function, if you, if you decorate it with dsl.pipeline, then it becomes a deployable pipeline that you can generate the pipeline package and upload it to the pipeline system for other users to run. Then in this case, I want to say uh, uh, flip coin up. Uh, I want to use it as a step. And then uh, uh, I, I have a condition. Uh, basically, if the output of the, the step is heads, then I will flip again. And again, I will have a nested condition here. If the flip to output result is tail, then I print this. Otherwise, I print, uh, print something else. So uh, it's a very simple pipeline, but demonstrates the, uh, the how do you define a pipeline, how do you define a pipeline component, and how do you do a runtime condition. So in this Jupyter notebook, I, I run this. And also, I can use the SDK to submit the job directly to the pipeline system. Um, first, I need to create a client. I list my experiments. Uh, I basically, I will use uh, the, uh, uh, the experiment, the first experiment to run my uh, pipeline. Then I call, uh, so first thing is I need to compile the pipeline. This is the pipeline function I just defined, flip coin, that, that is decorated with dsl.pipeline. And then I compile into our, our, our table package. And then I submit the pipeline um, to my pipeline cluster. I give it a name. I give it a package. Uh, it does not require any parameters. So the parameters are uh, empty. So I can click uh, here to view the results. So I, I flip it. I, I then, if, if the result, let's see, if the results is tails, then I print the results right away. So, okay, so this is a very simple pipeline. It's not a real world machine learning pipeline. Next, I'm going to demo uh, how do you, like, how do you uh, run a real world machine learning pipeline from a Jupyter Notebook. So by the way, we choose Jupyter Notebook because it's a very uh, a popular tool among data scientists. So uh, first you install the pipeline SDK, and then you define some uh, definitions like where do you want to store your results, what's your, what is your uh, cloud project name, because this machine learning pipeline, it, it basically, it, uh, in, in, in all its stages, it invokes uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, Google Cloud services, so it requires a project name. So similar things, you create a client, you, you list your experiments. And then let's say I, I found a pipeline somewhere uh, in Hub or stored in, in Google Cloud Storage or, or Amazon uh, S3 uh, that somebody shared this pipeline with me and I can just copy it and then I can run it immediately, okay? Very straightforward. And then let's see uh, how, do we, how do we define a pipeline? Uh, so this is a more a sophisticated real world machine learning pipeline. We, uh, it, it uses a lot of uh, TFX uh, components. So TFX is, um, uh, is, is a, I would say it's a, it's a community around TensorFlow that um, um, it's, it's uh, created by Google and uh, there are lots of uh, machine learning useful tools and libraries uh, um, around TensorFlow. So in this case, we uh, use uh, TFDA, uh, TensorFlow Data Validation, uh, what it does is it validates your training and serving uh, uh, data and also computes uh, some, uh, infer the, uh, the schema of your data. So you, you, you don't need to provide your schema. Um, and then next uh, step is to uh, do pre-processing. We use a, a, a TensorFlow to transform library to prevent training serving skew. 
and uh, and then the uh, third step is is a distributed trainer, and fourth step is to do a model analysis. Um, basically, uh, it slices your your features into different buckets and and give you an overview of all these uh, the uh, different metrics per bucket, and then it's followed by a batch prediction, and then the last thing is deploy the model to to the uh, uh, using TF serving. So. Um, we uh, again, so you ha we have a function with uh, um, at dsl.pipeline decorator. So this indicates this function is a deployable uh, pipeline, and all these parameters, function arguments, they will become pipeline parameters. Some of them comes with default value, um, which will show up in the UI, so user can choose to override or use. Some of the parameters a user always require to, uh, users are required to fill in a value. So this is the basically the topology of, of the workflow. Um, so you create a, a validation step, and then you pass uh, you use a validation out uh, a step output um, to 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 um, um, to uh, construct your schema path, and your schema is is used in the pre-process step and pre -pro and then the training step will use pre-process output pre-process output is basically pre-processing the, the output of the training step and it also takes an evaluation data and schema etc to to uh, perform uh, the model analysis and then the last thing is prediction of course prediction you need to take an output of the training okay. you can submit a run and uh, it gives it gives you an, a URL so it brings you to the uh, to the the runtime graph of 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 this pipeline. I would just quickly show you the analysis. Uh, we call it a TFMA. Uh, okay, yeah. So this is the a feature slice view of your model. So basically, it it runs an evaluation data set and give you a matrix per bucket view. For example, you can slice it by um, um, you can slice it by accuracy, etc. And you can pop it out to make it full screen. And of course, uh, there are uh, uh, in this case, I th there's no confusion matrix. Uh, it's because it's not. Uh, it's because I didn't add it to the my pipeline. So the point is, so given uh, such pipeline, okay, I need to go back to the notebook. So the, the point is, given such a pipeline, it's very easy to customize. For example, I don't want the last step. I don't want to deploy. I just comment it out. Then I create a new pipeline, that, which includes no deploy. And what's even cool, uh, cooler is, what if I want to create my own component, right? So we, I just mentioned that each component is basically backed up by our Docker container. Like for example, this deploy op is, is backed up by this Docker container image. How, how does a data scientist create a Docker container, create a component from scratch, right? A lot of data scientists, are, uh, they're not very familiar with Docker, with Kubernetes, so we also offer some help for that. So um, in the next like two minutes, I'll quickly go through uh, how, what's the workflow for user to, to create their own components. So one a quick way to create your own uh, uh, components or a step in a pipeline is you can uh, create a local uh, function that takes some uh, uh, function arguments and decorate it with DSL.Python component. And also specify what type of uh, the base image you want to run it on top of. The base image is basically the Docker container image that is used as a base for the, uh, as an environment for, uh, for, this, for this function. So, so inside uh, this, uh, you can ignore the decorator for now because for the first thing you, you typically want to do is you want to define a function and in this case, I want to switch the model deployer uh, from like TF serving deploy into our cloud machine learning service deployer. So I, I create this function. It basically talks to the cloud ML uh, uh, service to deploy my model. I can test it locally, just basically treat it as a local function, right? I can test it in my Jupyter uh, notebook, run it inside my Jupyter kernel. And now if, if, if everything is verified, I want to build a container on top of it. So what I do is I have a decorator, uh, give it a name, give it a base image, and uh, 
and then I can say compiler dot uh, uh, build a Python component, I, and it gives it a function name and give us our staging uh, Google storage path and, and also give it our target image uh, path. Then it will build the Docker container for you. So this is the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the logs for uh, building the Docker container. So what it does is it, it, it basically, it builds our Docker container starting from the base image and also uh, then also built in this function as the entry point to, to the Docker container image. Um, and it handles the serialization and deserialization of the parameters. Basically, instead of a function call, now it becomes a program, right? It takes some uh, uh, program arguments and then deserializes it and in, in internally it calls the function. So, so now uh, go back to the original pipeline. I can uh, replace my last deployer with a new deployer that I create. So, oh, by the way, so this, uh, uh, this function call compiler dot build Python component it um, besides building the docker container it also creates an operator that you can use directly in your pipeline in this case we use it deploy op um, here as the last step so now this pipeline instead of deploying in, into using TF serving into the cluster it deploys to a, a Google Cloud uh, in the uh, cloud machine learning service then you can Run the and and it will it will return our you to, to the running graph. Okay, so it's basically the authoring graph. We went through how do you author a topology of the graph given existing components. And I also did how uh, what if you want to create your own co own components? You can you can if you're familiar with Docker, you can Docker in and come with a small Python uh, wrapper class, or you can use the, the, uh, the quick way that we provide, basically define your local Python function, test it, and then use, a, 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 then use our SDK to convert that function into a pipeline component. Okay, last thing I want to cover is how do you deploy uh, the, the pipeline system? So, just go to uh, our GitHub. Again, the keyword is Kubeflow Pipelines. Go to the home page, and then uh, there are set up documentation. Deploy the Kubeflow Pipeline services to GKE, Google Cloud uh, Kubernetes Engine. But it's not limited to, to GKE. You can deploy it anywhere uh, uh, so long as uh, it supports uh, Kubernetes uh, deployment. So uh, the the, the first section is basically how, how, how do you create a GKE cluster? Um, and you, you run gcloud container cluster create um, and then you, you, you do a cluster row binding. So this experience is not, is not meant to be, uh, uh, is not designed for data scientists. It's, it's designed for like uh, admin or uh, DevOps. So, and then after you have your uh, Kubernetes cluster, you can run this command to, to deploy the pipeline uh, system into a cluster. And after, usually after three minutes, you, you, you get an up and running uh, cluster. And then you run this uh, uh, kubectl port forward, you can, you can, you can connect um, into the cluster. And this is exactly what I did here. So I, I just did a port forward to my cluster, to my, uh, um, uh, uh, GKE uh, um, uh, Kubernetes cluster. So, and uh, last thing I want to say is this project is still being developed and we are adding more and more features to it. Uh, and um, uh, we, we want to make it useful. We want to make it attractive to the community. And we, we also welcome uh, external contributors. So uh, take a look at the repo and see uh, if you're interested, feel free to contribute and uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's my talk today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bradley. I think there's definitely lots of things the attendees can take away today. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I think there's some questions in the Q&A box. Maybe you can answer for them. Okay, how, how do I see the... It's question? next to the share screen button. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, should I, uh, stop share mine? Yeah, you or? can stop share your screen maybe. Okay. And then did you see like a Q&A box? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are six questions. Mm -hmm. So the first question asked by Ben, uh, what are the difference between this and Pachyderm, for instance? Okay, so I, I know Pachyderm. Pachyderm is a data-driven uh, pipeline that, uh, that is uh, very much deeply integrated with uh, uh, like source code repository. You can check in some, some uh, slice of data, then it triggers run and uh, all the way to the end. So, so I'm not sure Pachyderm is a system uh, designed for machine learning. I think it's, uh, in my opinion, in my impression, I, I could be wrong, it's a, it's a system for general uh, uh, data pro processing uh, orchestration. It's not a system like, you, um, I'm not sure there's like a, a like confusion matrix UI or a lot of reusable components, uh, uh, machine learning components. Um, that said, Pachyderm has a very cool feature, which is it, it supports data-driven pipeline, right? It's triggered by data. This is something uh, the Kubeflow pipeline team, is, uh, right now we are working on to enable this uh, uh, data-driven uh, pipeline system. So let's see, second question. Do you use any ML algorithm? How do you define in this pipeline? So, uh, so the, like I just demoed, so the authoring flow is, you, there are two ways. One is you can build your own Docker image that basically builds everything inside the, doc the Docker image is a mini operating system, right? So it includes your dependency, including your OS, your dependencies, and your program. Your program can be your ML algorithm. You can use C++, Java, uh, whatever language you want. But uh, then uh, all you need is, is wrap it as a Docker container as an, and come up with a small Python uh, wrapper class to, to describe how do, how do we interact with the Docker container. Then um, it can be plugged into, into the pipeline system. And uh, uh, we also provide some out-of-box uh, machine learning algorithms. We provide uh, feed-forward neural network. We provide distributed XGBoost training. We provide a, a TF job, Kubeflow distributed trainer. So, so you can grab them. You can you can also uh, 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 build your own, which is by uh, building a Docker container, or use the data scientist uh, uh, tools, which is define your Python function and call our SDK uh, to convert that function into the Docker container. Okay. So next question: Do you require special UI package like Argo? to render pipeline jobs? Okay, great question. So uh, actually the, the pipeline system, we do use Argo uh, as part of our task orchestration uh, 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 system. Um, Argo is a, is a very useful tool on top of Kubernetes, uh, but we don't use Argo's UI, we create our own UI. The, purpose, the, the reason is we need to customize a lot of things. Uh, a lot of them are machine learning specific, like confusion matrix like ROC curve, like TensorBoard, hosted TensorBoard. Uh, these are, uh, are not provided by Argo, so we have our own front end. And next question, what do you think about Blue Data's custom controller Kube, Kube director? Um, and will it make it into the uh, Kubernetes uh, mainstream? I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with a custom controller. Is it a kind of, I'm not sure if it's a type of CRD on, on Kubernetes or not. So. Sorry, I cannot come on more on, on this question. Okay, next question. Kevin asked, is there one pipeline per doc image? No. So, so a pipeline is, uh, consists of multiple steps, and each step or each component is backed up by a Docker image. So typically, a pipeline uh, involves multiple Docker images. But you can also create a one-step pipeline. Then in that case, that pipeline uh, references only one Docker image. And Phil asked, uh, the premise was that uh, Kubeflow pipelines would make it easy for data science to create models with a simple set of tools and automation could create an equivalent production pipeline. The Jupyter notebook seems complex for data scientists to embrace. So um, I think uh, based on our experience and user study, Jupyter notebook is actually very popular among data scientists. Um, so uh, lots of big companies and open source world, they all provide all kinds of uh, uh, hosted Jupyter uh, notebook solutions. Um, so uh, 
so that, that's why we, 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 we build a lot of features and, and embrace Jupyter Notebook. And also among the Kubeflow uh, community, we also find lots of uh, people are, are, are Jupyter Notebook fans. So, um, yeah, so I, I, so from our perspective, uh, Jupyter Notebook is a, is a critical tool, is, is like a daily tool for the data scientists. And, and that's why we choose it as our uh, authoring platform. And last question, um, SL asked, how would you compare Kubeflow pipeline? Oh, so Phil replied, I didn't mean that using Jupyter Notebooks work probably. The question is, oh, whether the DSL is complex. Okay, so um, I, I, I think um, we did some comparison between uh, DSL and the, the raw uh, pipeline representation, which is like an Argo YAML. And our conclusion is Argo YAML um, or whatever uh, the underlying uh, uh, representation is much harder to deal with. So there are a few reasons. So first, so our, like a, a low level representation like an, an Argo YAML, um, uh, it, it's, it's hard to, to author because you, 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 you need to know the schema and the developer experience is, is suboptimal because the, like there's no like intelligence, uh, autocomplete, like Python. And another important reason is the YAML by itself is not very composable. Versus if you do it in DSL, uh, in Python language, which data scientists, most of data scientists are already familiar with, they are already familiar with uh, uh, Python language. So you get the intelligence, you get the doc string, and 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 more important is you can you can do the easy legalization. Uh, you can reuse a pipeline basically just calling the pipeline function as a normal function, and you can use a component uh, basically just by by calling the constructor of of our a uh, Python class. And okay, cool. So um, uh, I think uh, I can. Uh, yeah, uh, this is anyway. This is the last question. SL asks, would you compare uh, Kubeflow pipeline to other ML workflow like Packidem or more general workflow tools like Airflow or even Argo. Yes, so there, uh, there are uh, existing um, orchestration systems uh, like Airflow, Argo, Pachyderm. So, so I want to emphasize is so so uh, the the Kubeflow pipeline is 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 specific to machine learning. So we pro we we provide a lot of machine learning syntax sugar in it. Uh, for example, in the, the DSL, in the, in the programming language, we provide, uh, we want to, uh, at some point, we want to have uh, like uh, uh, machine learning concept uh, artifacts as uh, the first class citizens. Like for example, one pipeline function, one component will just return a model. And a model can be uh, like a list of uh, key value properties, like uh, type equals TensorFlow, uh, storage equals S3, something like that. And also our friend and is very uh, machine learning friendly. Okay, this is one. And second is Kubeflow pipeline is designed for hybrid uh, scenarios. It can, it's very portable because it's, it's on top of Kubernetes. So you can, it's, so uh, on that perspective, it, 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 it shares the benefits of Argo, right? You can, you, can, you can do it on the cloud and you can easily port it to your on-prem uh, deployment uh, uh, of uh, the clusters, and um, and and third, um, the, I think the most important thing is uh, we are pretty ambitious about this project. Um, it's a it's a big investment. We we want to uh, uh, make machine learning uh, 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 pipelines and components uh, reusable, so uh, and composable. So the Kubeflow pipeline. Uh, supports the reusability and composition of all these pipeline components. Like you can, somebody else will create a very cool, like, uh, I don't know, um, uh, object detection um, um, algorithm. And then it, he or she just uh, creates a Docker container and create a Python class and, and, and put it in a shared repository. And someone else can pip install it and use it right away. So this is, uh, I think this is the most uh, uh, important differentiator uh, between Kubeflow pipeline and other pipelines. We have our ecosystem. We are designed to reuse. We are designed to uh, uh, collaborate, uh, use the collaboration um, in, inside the community. Okay, I think I covered all the questions. Okay, thank you, Bradley.